On is one of the most hyped shoe brands in 2024, but how did this monster fare on foot? This is the Cloud Monster 2. What's up everyone? It's Eric McIntyre, AKA at Rad Dad Bod, and you are here at Rad Dad Bod TV, where we review running shoes. Now today we're gonna to be reviewing the On Cloud Monster 2, which was probably one of my most requested reviews. We'll dive into a couple of things before we get into the details of the shoe, but if you haven't already, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as it goes a long way in helping me be able to provide more shoe reviews for you. And along the way, if you like what you see, please go ahead, hit that like button and leave a comment as well if you have any constructive criticism as I'm always looking to improve these reviews and find a way to make them more entertaining, more educational, and just better overall. Now, starting off with any disclaimers and disclosures, I actually did pay for these shoes 100%. There was no discount involved whatsoever. I went to a local running store and purchased these, and it's a local running store that I have no affiliation with. So that being said, neither on nor any store or anyone is going to see this review beforehand. These thoughts are entirely my own. All right, let's dive into it. So the On Cloud Monster 2 is On's Max Cushion Daily Trainer for 2024. Now the shoe comes in at about $180 price point, which is expensive for a Max Cushion Daily Trainer. Most of them kind of fall in the $160 range, but for those who are familiar with On, you are kind of paying a premium for their brand recognition, their brand name, and what they will call their Swiss engineering as well. If you're new to the running shoe game, a daily trainer, especially a max cushion daily trainer, is typically used on kind of daily easier pace runs and not necessarily built for more speed. So we'll break down kind of how this shoe works within that frame. The shoe comes in at a 10.5 ounce weight, which is on the heavier side, but not necessarily heavy for a max cushion daily trainer. So that's pretty typical. And that's for a men's size nine. The heel stack is a 39 with a 33 in the forefoot for a six millimeter heel to toe drop overall. Now, as far as the fit goes, this is quite possibly the widest fitting shoe I've ever worn. Um, I half size down and I don't know that that necessarily helped. Um, in, if anything, it might have just given me a little bit of less room in the toe box. But the thing is, uh, the shoe has plenty of room everywhere. So I don't know if I would necessarily fully recommend that you have size down, but if you try on the shoe and you do find that you have a little bit of extra room between the end of your toe and the end of the shoe, I would maybe consider it to give yourself a little snugger fit, but I, I'm not exaggerating when I say that it was not a snug fit whatsoever. It felt a little bit like a tarp on my foot. The width is true throughout the entire shoe. Um, so very wide toe box, very, very wide midfoot, which is where it was most notable for me. And then in the heel, there's some cushioning in the heel right here. So you don't necessarily get any heel slippage with your foot coming up. You can cinch down the laces pretty good. But to cinch down the laces, you are kind of pinching down that material on the top of your foot. And I did feel a little bit of lace pressure. As far as the upper itself, it's very breathable. This is an engineered mesh. Um, and then you have some strategic kind of thicker material overlays here and some kind of plasticky, probably a TPU overlay there in the heel itself to add some durability and potentially lock your heel in place with that heel counter. And so from a lockdown standpoint, I didn't feel like my foot was gonna come out of the shoe, but I did feel at various points in time that my foot was sliding around in the shoe. Now, there are some people who just want a much, much wider fitting shoe. They find it a lot more accommodating. They It allows their foot to kind of spread out. And if you can cinch down these laces a little bit, then yes, you can get some better lockdown in the midfoot, but it just kind of leaves you with a little bit baggy upper overall. So while the upper is not necessarily bad. I was not a fan for my foot in terms of how I like my shoes to fit. I don't necessarily like a tight shoe, but this, like I said, is probably the widest fitting shoe I've ever had. Now, from a lacing standpoint, I did kind of like how the laces were almost like a fast lacing system. Um, these little loops allow you to lace up really quick and pull and cinch down fast. So it really, really nice. I didn't feel like the laces were coming loose necessarily. And I do feel like with a 
better fitting upper, less of a wide fit, that these shoes would have fit really, really well because the materials themselves are really, really nice. They even have a fully gusseted tongue that is very thin and mesh-like, which is very breathable. So lots of premium feeling materials in the shoe. Uh, just the upper for me was a miss. Now the midsole is very interesting. It is a Helion Cloud Tech midsole with a dual density. So you have a slightly different density foam here in the forefoot than you do in the midfoot and the heel. Uh, and then you have what is called a nylon speed board, which is like a nylon plate that runs through a portion of the shoe, I believe kind of right above the cloud tech itself. Now what this all does is it resulted in a very, very stable shoe underfoot, um, but it also resulted in a very firm, almost kind of stiffer shoe underfoot. This is not inherently bad. A lot of people like a stiffer feel. And for me personally, I had been dealing with a little bit of kind of plantar fasciitis like pain while I was testing these. And so I actually really enjoyed and really appreciated a nicer firm feeling underfoot on a lot of my daily runs that the Cloud Monster 2 provided. That being said, if you are looking for a max cushion feeling shoe underfoot, this is not it. Um, it feels very much more like a standard daily trainer in terms of foam underfoot, where uh, if you like a little bit more ground feel, the irony is you don't get ground feel, but it does feel like you're getting ground feel in these shoes. So you get a little bit of that proprioceptive feedback. One thing I did notice is that the foam and the shoe underfoot did feel like it was loosening up a little bit the more I ran in it. Um, most modern day running shoes don't really need a long break-in period or even a break-in period at all with some of the newer foams. So I didn't expect that to necessarily happen, but I should say that it did indeed happen that uh, the foam does seem to kind of soften up and loosen up. The other kind of maybe potential asterisk here is I ran in these a lot over the winter here in Utah and this foam seems to respond a little bit poorly to the cold in terms of staying a little bit stiffer. And as it has warmed up a little bit, the shoe has started to loosen up some as well. So just to kind of summarize, underfoot when compared to other max cushion shoes, this feels very, very firm, feels a lot more like a daily trainer as opposed to a shoe I might take out on a recovery run. And that is how I personally used it. From an outsole standpoint, you have some strategically placed rubber and it is a durable grip rubber that they call it. You can see kind of that grip pattern there and I did find that it responded really, really well, even on slicker surfaces. So I really appreciated it and I appreciate a good, nice, strong rubber on the daily trainers style shoes. Now, some people with on, they say that rocks will get caught in your shoes kind of between the cloud tech. And I did experience that a little bit occasionally, but if you're running primarily on road and not really on any gravel, you're not likely to feel that or have that issue uh, with any rocks getting caught in the cloud tech themselves. From a durability standpoint, you've got minimal wearing there in the heel um, and little to no wearing in the mid or forefoot. Uh, all in all, it does feel like the durability of these shoes is going to be really, really nice. So if you are looking for a shoe that will probably last um, and you're tired of having to buy so many pairs of shoes, then the Cloud Monster 2 price tag may be justified if you can find that you get more miles out of these compared to other more modern brands. Now, who is this shoe for? There's a couple of different audiences that I kind of think of. The obvious one is those with wide feet. Um, again, this is the widest shoe I have ever run in. And so those who have wide feet who are tired of trying to find brands that are accommodating the on Cloud Monster 2 may be a good daily option for you. The other people that I might think of are those who are looking for a little bit stiffer of a shoe um, or a little bit firmer of a foam underfoot. Even though this is supposed to be a max cushion shoe, it feels a lot more like a daily trainer, like a standard daily trainer. And um, again, I used it on days when my feet were kind of hurting me and I needed a little bit more protection underfoot. And so that if you're someone who suffers from maybe plantar fasciitis, who has some arch pain, something along those lines, this may be a potential option for you. I'm not saying it is a cure. I'm not saying it is a fix. I'm just saying if you want a firmer foam underfoot, 
this may be a good option for you. And lastly, maybe people who are looking for a more durable, longer lasting shoe. Uh, some of the modern foams in running shoes seem to deteriorate a little bit quicker, and this seems like it may be a good option for a kind of durable, longer lasting shoe. There are nice premium materials throughout this shoe. It does seem to be built with quality and durability in mind. So yes, it does come at a premium, but it may be worth the price tag if it lasts longer than some of the cheaper counterparts. All right, now talking comparisons. If you like the Cloud Monster 2 for more of your daily runs like myself, and you're looking for a shoe that is a lot squishier, a lot more plush, that is gonna give you some nice cushion underfoot, then you may wanna consider the Asics Gel Nimbus 26. The Gel Nimbus 26 is also pretty wide, very accommodating, and has that wide base that you are probably used to with the Cloud Monster 2. Now the heel to toe drop, overall stack height, a lot of things are gonna be different about these shoes. I'm just saying if you want something that is a lot more cushioned, but maybe has a similar overall fit, this is the route to go. I will say I have a hard time making any comparisons to other shoes with this shoe in general, just because the Cloud Monster 2 is very unique. I don't think that there's a lot of other shoes like this on the market. Um, when compared to other Max Cushion shoes, thinking maybe like the Hoka Bondi, the New Balance More, those are both going to be significantly softer, more plush overall. Um, and so again, those could be your max cushion options, um, but they're all gonna fit a lot narrower, a lot different than the Cloud Monster 2. Now I won't talk about this comparison too much because I've already done a full video on the breakdown of the differences, but what I will say is if you're looking for a shoe that can go a little bit faster, that is a little bit softer and has a more accommodating, not accommodating, but has a more classical fit in the upper, then the Cloud Monster Hyper is going to be your move. Um, these shoes fit and feel very, very similar, which was obviously intentional by on. The difference is you've got a Piva base foam in the forefoot of the Hyper, and you just have kind of that regular Helion Cloud Tech foam in the Cloud Monster 2. The other difference is the upper of the Cloud Monster 2 does fit more traditional. Now, I still half sized down though in the Cloud Monster Hyper because it still fits wide in general, but not nearly as wide as the Monster 2. So in my mind, I think that the Hyper fits and feels like I would imagine the Cloud Monster 2 would. So do what you will with that information. The Hyper obviously comes in at a much higher price tag. Um, so if you felt like the Monster 2 was already expensive for a max cushion shoe, well then you're probably not gonna wanna pay the Hyper prices. But all in all, these two shoes do go really, really well together in terms of training partners and feel. Um, you're gonna get a little bit more fast, more cushy feel underfoot over here. And this is gonna be your firmer feel underfoot. All right, final thoughts on the Cloud Monster 2. Um, all in all, I did enjoy my miles in the shoe, just not for the intended purposes of the shoe. It felt a lot firmer than I was expecting. Um, the ride was just completely different than what I thought I was getting myself into but I was grateful to have a firmer fitting shoe that was going to take some of the pressure off of my feet when I was having some foot pain. I really hope that On can figure out the fit of the upper uh, whenever the third iteration of the shoe comes out. I think it will probably be a couple of years, uh, but if they just fix the upper, I think that the foam has a place. I think that the firmness of the foam, um, you know, different preferences, different shoes, I like having that firmer option while still being able to protect your feet in that way. But it's really, really hard for me to continue to put on more and more miles in the shoe um, with how that upper fits. So all in all, probably need some fixes for me for this shoe to become a staple in my rotation. Nonetheless, I did enjoy the miles that I did run in them. Um, so that's the review here of the Cloud Monster 2. Let me know in the comments if you've tried the shoe, what your thoughts were. And uh, you know, I'm having a hard time coming up with some comparisons. So let me know in the comments, what does this shoe feel the most similar to in your experience? Um, but if you haven't already, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and come back for more because we've got lots of shoe reviews coming your way over the coming weeks. Thanks everybody.